Pedro Mikasi. I don't know what she said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. There's murder in Osage. The time is over. I'm coming after oil. Oh, don't come near my family. You picked a fight with the wrong person. I was sent out the bureau to see about these murders. I need him to kill these men who killed my family. <laughs> Sir, it's such an honor to chat with you. My first question, why should fans see Killers of the Flower Moon in IMAX? Well, for me, I made this film for the big screen and IMAX is the big screen. That's all there is to it. And uh, what I mean by the big screen is that it's a spectacle, but I think there's more than simply a visual spectacle, although simply is maybe not the right adjective, but maybe not the right word. <clears throat> but there's a visual spectacle, but also it's an internal spectacle. And I would love to be able to, for an audience together, to be immersed in this film, immersed in this world, so that it, in a way, days later, weeks later, maybe years later, there's still thoughts about it that, 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 you know, that resonate with you. And maybe, in, maybe enrich your life in a way, maybe they're questions. Maybe they're questions. Maybe you have five, ten different answers for those questions. But as you grow, maybe the questions, your responses change. And so I found that were great movies. And I was hoping that this is the kind of picture, like certain films I've seen, like you know, Michael Powell, Pressburger films, certain John Ford films, certain uh, Fellini films, that sort of thing. I find that when I see them later, it's the same movie, but I'm finding other things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so I hope that um, the experience of seeing this on that wonderful screen on IMAX is really going to be something that they can all share together. Well, I think this was a great film. This is a great film. I was blown away by it too. I really, seriously. We did an interview with your DP, Rodrigo, uh, and we asked him about what his favorite scene was and any kind of behind the scenes info about it. So I wanted to share the question with you and see what was your favorite scene to shoot? And if you have any behind the scenes tidbits, that would be interesting. Well, I mean, we, uh, we enjoyed shooting the wedding for one and the boom up at the end as De Niro was preaching, calling out to Wakanta, you know. Um, but there is one scene that is quite something um, where Leo's character comes back into the house after the explosion and he has to tell Lily, he has to tell uh, Molly that it's her sister's house. And we worked it out so that it's one take and the camera's point of view and he's just walking through the house yeah. and you hear a child calling, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy which was real, was happening. There was a baby down, downstairs and, and we go to the door and he opens the door and you look down and there they're hiding in the storm shelter. And then Leo just, she looks up. He doesn't say it's your sisters. He doesn't say anything. He just goes, shakes his head and she knows. And then she, it just some a primal scream comes out, which, uh, which is stunning for everybody. If you see it in the, the baby was crying, but everybody froze. Yeah. Everybody you, froze for real. Yeah. And you felt it too as an audience yeah. member. Yeah, <laughs> like really you felt really it. Did. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Um, because we had planned it a whole other way. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we had planned it that we came and that he came in the house and they were there with the kids. And I said, how could they be there in the, in the living room when the house just blew up? I mean, they've got to, where could we go? And somebody, I think Lily said, there's, there's a storm shelter. I said, great. And we went and we opened the door and we looked down. Look at that. It's terrific. And Rodrigo, his face went white because he, he has to light it. <laughs> and we hadn't planned it. <laughs> That's funny. I said, can you do something? Was yeah, okay. And we did it the same day, so it worked. That's incredible. <laughs> I want to talk about your fandom for a second, because I've done a lot of research on you. And one question that we have really liked to ask our filmmaker friends is, if there is any movie that you could experience in IMAX, again or for the first time, theoretically, what would it be and why? <laughs> oh, my. It's a tough one. Yeah, it is. I mean, having seen like Lawrence of Arabia and uh, on, on 70 millimeter and Vertigo in 70 millimeter, I, I've been there. You know, I saw Vertigo and uh, you know, High Society and uh, um, The Searchers and all those films in VistaVision, projected in VistaVision. Yeah. And that was a, a, quite an experience. I was 13 or 14 years old. Uh, there's a film I love called The Red Shoes, uh, which uh, we restored a few years back. and. Uh, and my editor, Thomas Goodmake, was married to Michael Powell, who was one of the, the filmmakers of it. And I'm telling you, the color in that and the story still holds up. 
It's extravagant. To see that in IMAX would be amazing. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I always tell people, because I've done this a lot and I've asked this question a lot, I actually say your film, uh, The Departed. It's The Departed in IMAX? That's what I've always wanted to see. Because that movie specifically is the reason why I'm even sitting in this chair. Really? Yeah. Really? So That's interesting, because that was a tough picture to make. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the world tough, but that, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Really. Okay. Terrific.